sun and CO2 to make glucose, the sugar that they use for food. They also put oxygen into the air so we can share because oxygen is everywhere. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about some of the different types of relationship between predators and prey. And in this video, we're going to cover something related. Because this also talks about different types of relationship. I'll read the actual dot point. It says, identify examples of aleopathy, parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism in the ecosystem, and the role of each organism in each type of relationship. So the actual dot point says we need to talk about aleopathy, parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism, and give examples and say what, which organism is affected in which kind of way. So before I start, I'll go over again what kind of relationships there overall are. Are there you know, beneficial relationships or harmful relationships? And the one we discussed in the last video was the predator and prey. Now obviously, for example, if you prey, then in that predator and prey relationship, you're going to have, you, that's going to be harmful for you. You're not going to want to have that kind of relationship because you don't want to be the prey. Same thing with competition. We mentioned competition, which is generally harmful because with competition, you have both organisms in that relationship they don't benefit because they just have less food or less space, less food or less space because of the competition. So they would be better off if the other member didn't exist because they're just taking away from their food or space. They're not killing them directly, but they're indirectly killing them because they're taking away their food or their space. So competition was a harmful relationship. And then we also have things like you know, the host. So what I mean by host is we have a parasite and a parasite lives off a host. If you're the host, that's harmful for you because you're being fed off from the parasite. So you don't want to be the host in a parasite-host relationship. You don't like competition in general because competition means you have less food and less space, which means you have less resources. And if you're the prey in a predator and prey relationship, it's also quite bad. So this would be the predator and prey here. The predator is here, our predator, our cat. And our prey would be the rabbit. This would be the host. So, yeah, sorry, this is the parasite. And the parasite feeds off the host. Again, bad for the host because it's just being fed off. Now, beneficial relationships, these are, for example, your, many of your symbiotic relationships where both members benefit. And this is the example, one example of it. This is the lichen. And lichen is actually a combination of two organisms. So it's two different types of organisms. And or an organism is just any living thing. It says the role of organisms. You need to know that word organism. That's just any living thing. So it could be a bacteria, a plant, an animal, any living thing is an organism. And this tree here, or this lichen, is actually two different organisms, two different living things. And without them, so if they're not together, if they're by themselves, they would actually die. So they need to be together to be able to survive. So these two organisms are in a beneficial relationship because they rely on each other. And also we have some relationships like this here, where we have the bird eating off the zebra back. So even if the bird, so the bird is being benef benefited of this. The bird has a beneficial relationship. And even if the, if the zebra doesn't benefit from it, the zebra generally is not harmed. It's not being harmed. So the zebra is not being harmed. Even if it's not benefiting, it's still not being harmed. So not harmed, whereas the bird is benefiting. So when it comes to the ecosystem, so any given area, we want to look at the different types of relationships. Are they harmful? Are they beneficial? And what kind of relationships are there? So these are examples. I'm going to talk about aleopathy, parasitism, mutualism, and commensalism. Now, but these are all different types of relationships. The first one is aleopathy. Now, this is actually a quite interesting one. And the example, because it says examples, examples you can think of would be the eucalyptus trees, eucalyptus tree. And some eucalyptus trees can do this. What they can do is, you can imagine this here is, it would be a eucalyptus tree. What it can do is it can produce poisons or chemicals. Most of them are poisonous. There are actually some which are beneficial for other plants, but most are poisonous. And what they do, they actually have their poison in their leaves. So their leaves have these chemicals in them. So I'll just draw a leaf here. And this leaf has chemicals. And I'll draw the chemicals in these purple dots. And once the actual leaf drops, so for whatever reason it drops and goes into soil, I'm going to draw the soil here in brown. What will happen is it will decompose, the leaf will decompose and put these poison dots into the soil. And this might, you know, wash away because of rain or it might stay there. But what this does, it prevents, it prevents the growth of different plants. So if, for example, you know, you have, it either prevents the growth or it can actually kill different plants around it, this poison. So again, you have your eucalyptus tree here and it might produce this poison and it might kill off different plants around it 
or it prevents them from growing in the first place. I mean, why would a eucalyptus tree want to do that? Well, the more it kills off and the more space it has, now it has a whole area to itself because of that chemical that it produced through aleopathy. And that chemical means that now that means it has more space and more water and more nutrients, so it itself can grow more. That's why it does that. So it has more space and more food for it to be able to grow at, at the expense of the other plants. So what is the aleopathy? It's usually done by plants. Plants produce chemicals that affect other plants nearby. So in this case, the eucalyptus tree produces chemicals which affect nearby plants. Now, who benefits? Well, the producing plants. So the eucalyptus tree, for example, I'm going to write E for eucalyptus tree. That would benefit because it has more space. Obviously, other plants, in most cases, don't benefit because they either die off or their seeds don't grow. So seeds don't grow which means overall it's just they're affected negatively. So for the aleopathy, we have a positive relationship for the chemical producing plant, a negative relationship for the other plants nearby. The next, next word was parasitism, and parasitism comes from the word parasite. Parasite. And this one should be a one that's familiar with most of you. So the example could be the mosquito, which is right here. And a parasite feeds off the host without killing it. Usually a parasite is smaller than the host, so what it does is actually, for example, the mosquito it sucks blood. So it's here, it sucks blood. And the blood itself is actually the food for the mosquito. And the parasite benefits. So the parasite, it's a good relationship for the parasite. So it's good because it's getting its food. But the host, whilst it's usually not killed, it's usually negatively affected. And what I mean by host is just any, it's the host that, it, for example, the host is the thing that hosts the parasite, the thing that is being fed off. So if a mosquito bites us, we're the host. And other examples of parasitism are, you know, tapeworms or ticks, anything like that is a host. So for parasites, the parasite is has a beneficial part of that relationship, whereas for the host, it's negative, it's harmful. The next example was mutualism. And mutualism, I mean the word mutual is in there. And mutual just means that, you know, it's kind of done in the, the consent of both parties. So mutualism means that it's both good for both parties. So what I wrote is both organisms benefit from the relationship. And obviously the easy one to sort of visualize is the bee in the flower. So the bee here is benefiting. Why? Because it gets food. The pollen that it gets from the actual, it is sugar in there. So the sugar it gets is a food. But then what happens is the actual pollen, which is what it needs to, what the flower needs to reproduce, the pollen gets stuck on the actual legs of the bee. So what the bee does, it gets food. But because the pollen gets stuck, it will also help the flower because it, the actual bee is going to travel to the next flower and it's going to get food again. But, but by going there, it's going to get its actual pollen, which is now stuck to its leg, and insert it, inject it into a new plant, which means we have fertilization happening. So the flower benefits because it spreads its pollen, which means we have new flowers being produced. So the flower spreads its pollen using the bee, and the bee gets food. So none of them are being harmed, they're both being benefited. And all examples of mutualism is where both parties benefit. Next one is commensalism, and commensalism is where one organism benefits and the other is not harmed. So I'll show you the example of the zebra and the bird, that's usually something that we would consider commensalism. The bird gets food, so it picks food off the back of the zebra, and sometimes the zebra does benefit, but often it's just not harmed. Like it's, there's no disadvantage of having the bird pick it, but it's also not really benefiting from it. So the bird benefits, but the actual zebra is not harmed. That's commensalism. So it doesn't benefit, but it isn't harmed. And the example you can also think of is, is the fig tree. So for example, if we have a tree here, this is our main tree. I'm going to read different colors so you can see it better. This is our main tree. And you can see this tree climbers, this one here and this one here. These are our fig trees. And what fig trees do is they need to use different plants or trees to be able to grow. And because all plants, I mentioned you know, photosynthesis a while ago, all plants need to have sunlight to be able to make their own sugar. And these plants, what they do is they use a tree as kind of a climbing tool to be able to get all the way to the top of the actual tree and get to sunlight. So they use a tree. The tree itself, most cases, does not benefit, but it's also not harmed. So it's a commensalism relationship because the fig tree benefits, it gets sun, which means it can produce sugar, whereas the host tree does not benefit, but it's also not harmed. 
which requires commensalism. There are some exceptions when, for example, these fig trees, they get too many and too big a number, they could actually take away some of the actual soil and they could take away some of the actual nutrients from the main tree. In that case, it would change to a competition relationship. But if that's not the case, if it's just a smaller scale, then it's commensalism. Because the fig tree benefits by getting more food. The old tree does not benefit but is not harmed. So it's a commensalism relationship. So I'll go over the different ones again. Eleopathy, that is one when a certain plant produces chemicals that interfere with the growth of the plants nearby. That's a good relationship for the actual plant that's producing the chemicals, but a bad relationship for the plants close by because they either die or their seeds don't germinate. I've got parasitism. That's when we have parasites. So parasites feed off the host without killing it. So the host itself, for example, the human, would be harmed. Now, it's annoying having ticks or mosquitoes on you, but you generally don't die. Whereas the parasite benefits because it's getting food. Blood for a mosquito is its food. Mutualism is when both benefits. For example, we said the a bee in a flower. The bee gets food from the actual flower. It's attracted to the, the nectar. But at the same time, it gets a pollen stuck to its actual leg. But then the bee will go to the next flower. It will actually put that pollen by mistake, by accident almost, into the flower, which means the flower spreads its seed and the bee gets its food. Both benefit. Commensalism is when one benefits and one isn't harmed. An example would be uh, your fig tree, which climbs on the main tree. As long as the fig tree doesn't isn't competition for the host tree, then both then the fig tree benefits and the host tree isn't harmed, but doesn't benefit either. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.